I'm in the Sub-Zero lab today. It's a little cold out, but it's about as cold, as warm as it's going to get for a while. So I figure 45 degrees. I wanted to show you guys, and I'm glad this is going to record as well, a couple of interesting things when I uh, dismantled the bat cell. First thing I want to note is that the plastic cable ties that I used to wrap around the cell that, that hold the, the uh, plates, the plate groupings together are not nearly as tight as they were when I first assembled the cell. They relaxed a great deal. And even even with this low resolution webcam, I think that shows up okay. Um, so that was that was a little bit of a surprise. And the other thing that I wanted to show you guys is an interesting anomaly that I noticed in the discoloration of the plates directly adjacent to the holes that I put in the barrier walls that allow for the electrolyte fluid level equalization. Now this effect is most profound at the plate groupings that were closest to the negative terminal of the cell. And the effect slowly um, diminishes as you get closer to plate groupings closest to the positive input terminal. So I'm going to show you plates that have discolored and get an idea. All right. Here is here is a group of plates that have discolored with a golden haze. And I know that does not show up very well. I think that's probably about as good as we're going to get there. But you'll notice you'll notice that it's pretty uniform. Now this plate here is the most positive plate on, on the positive side of the barrier wall. And directly adjacent to it is this plate right here. And this is, with respect to polarity, this plate is most negative to the uh, plates in the next adjacent cell. So obviously, even despite the fact that I was able to eliminate a vast majority of the leakage, current leakage, there still is some current leakage that occurs through the opening of that hole that allows my fluid level to equalize in between chambers. Now as it relates to a percentage of the total surface area of each plate grouping, this is the only spot yeah, this is the only spot where that occurs. On every other plate within the, within the plate grouping, okay, you don't see any evidence of that. So while this may look like a large percentage of the surface area, this is a this is a percentage of the surface area of one side of only one plate, of which there are ten plates. So it really makes up a very, very tiny percentage of the total surface area represented by the um, monopolar plates plate groupings. And that was Clearly, one of the benefits and advantages of, of putting together the plates this way so that the um, percentage of the surface area that is affected is much, much lower. It's kind of interesting. So I've been, uh, I've been taking these plates apart and um, drying them off. <sighs> I have a shop that's going to blast these for me, and I'm going to try to replicate what uh, HHO Power has been doing with with his monster beastie, as he calls it. That thing is a beast.
but uh, can certainly appreciate how difficult it is to eliminate 100% of the current leakage in an electrolyte solution that is highly, highly conductive. And uh, so the other thing is, the other thing is, when I clipped, when I clipped the uh, the cable ties that hold these stacks together, it practically fell apart. Um, in fact, some of the some of the uh, cable ties that I used that I had that I had uh, slipped in as spacers. The reason I had used marine adhesive on the edges was I had hoped that it would uh, maintain its um, ad adhesion to the edge of the nylon cable ties to hold them in place after the cell was in operation. Well, let me tell you something. Nothing sticks once you've begun the process of electrolysis. So when you've got electrons flowing around these things, it just lets go. The, uh, the adhesion of the marine adhesive for the um, acrylic on the enclosure held very, very well. But uh, fortunately, I did use the marine adhesive because that allowed me to take the top of the cell apart <coughs> for dismantling and rebuilding. And with that, I'm going to continue rebuilding. As I'm wiping these off, the, uh, the positive plates retain the uh, bronze haze that they picked up from the electrolyte. You can see how along the edges where the uh, where the cable ties rested, you don't get that that bronze haze effect. And then where the uh, where the cable ties did not cover is where the bronze the bronze hazing on both sides, of course, because they are monopolar plates. On the negative plates, you get a slightly darker tone uh, bronze haze, but it is clearly more particulate. And here here is a negative plate. You'll notice it is a it is a darker brown, and it is actually like a powder that wipes off. And when it when it's wiped off, it actually comes fairly clean. You can actually see the the uh, silver metal underneath. I have a feeling that what I'm rubbing off is practically pure hexavalent chromium. Although I don't know that for sure, I am wearing gloves just the same. And my rag is slightly moistened to prevent it from releasing into the air so that I don't breathe it in. You can see there a section of the plate that I have cleaned off versus a part that I have not rubbed very hard. It does come fairly clean. One other thing I'd like to point out that the, uh, the very even discoloration that occurred on the plates in solution across the edge of the plate is a good indicator that the uh, the amount of current that I was passing through these plates did not exceed uh, the maximum recommended uh, amount of current per square inch on the plates and gave me a nice even charge distribution across the plates so I'm really pleased with, with that aspect of this design.